Ok. So, guys. Listo, chicas. Entonces, les voy a explicar otra vez qué vamos a hacer. ¿Sí? Hoy tenemos un tema nuevo que es el que ustedes están viendo en pantalla, que es este. Eh, vamos a mirar entonces cuándo utilizo este tema, para qué se utiliza. Vamos a mirar algunos ejemplos, alguna, ah, vamos a hacer una pequeña práctica. Eh, luego vamos también a terminar de practicar esto. Y después al final vamos a um, terminar con un ejercicio de speaking. Sí, voy a tratar de hacer un ejercicio de speaking con ustedes. Me gustaría escuchar a la mayoría de ustedes. El ejercicio de speaking va a estar obviamente relacionado con el tema. Ya luego les explico cómo lo vamos a hacer. También vamos a tener un ejercicio de listening. Esta vez vamos a hacer el ejercicio con mi voz. ¿sí? Y también vamos a tener ya al final, eh, vamos a terminar repasando lo que es eh, reading. ¿Sí? Entonces, nuestra habilidad de lectura. Eso va a ser como básicamente nuestra clase. So, let's start. Here we have a um, very common uh, topic. This topic is very, very used in our daily basis. It is, and it is that questions. ¿Sí? Alguna vez en nuestras, en nuestras vidas o alguna vez... Mientras escuchábamos o hablábamos con alguien, utilizamos sad questions sin darnos cuenta. ¿Por qué? Porque es un tema que utilizamos muy en nuestra vida cotidiana, mucho, perdón, utilizamos mucho en nuestra vida cotidiana, ¿sí? ¿Qué son las sad questions o cuando utilizo sad questions? Well, I use this type of questions to ask for an opinion, to ask for an opinion or to confirm a specific information, ¿sí? Entonces, vamos a utilizar las that questions cuando yo quiero saber la opinión de las demás personas o cuando, quiero, o cuando yo quiero confirmar o no sé una información en específico. En español, to make a comparison, we use as well that questions, ¿sí? Para comparar. Nosotros también en el español utilizamos este tipo de preguntas. Muchas veces hemos dicho alguna cosa como, ¿a ti te gustan los camarones? Cierto. O también decimos, yo no, yo no trabajo bajo presión. ¿Tú sí? Eh, o también eh, decimos como, el lunes no tenemos clase, ¿verdad? Cosas como esas. That type of questions in Spanish are similar in English. Yes, entonces, esos tipos de preguntas que nosotros hacemos en el español son similares a las que hacemos en inglés o son las that questions in English, ¿sí? So, for example, you don't drink coffee, do you? Your cat is so gorgeous, isn't he? ¿Sí? Entonces, este tipo de preguntas, chicos, lo utilizo para pedir la opinión de alguien más o para confirmar información específica o algo que yo estoy utilizando, que yo estoy diciendo. ¿Sí? Si me hago entender hasta ahí. ¿Sí van conmigo? Yes. Yes. Okay, I have a question. You have a question? Yes. Why the cat is he and not it? O sea, debería ser isn't it, ¿no? Eh, yes, it could be. Sí, claro que puede ser. Pero, Erika, recuerda que cuando yo estoy hablando de una mascota, eh, yo le aplico simplemente por respeto. Sí, por respeto a la otra persona, incluso a la mascota, yo le eh, doy un género. Si sí, sí, la mascota es hembra, entonces le digo she. Si la mascota es macho, digo he. Si ya es cualquier animal, puedo utilizar it. Pero ah. si es la mascota tuya o la mascota de alguien más, sí es mucho mejor decir eh, con el género que, al que pertenece. Vale, gracias. Ok, thanks for your question. Um, so, let's continue. Vamos entonces a mirar cómo se construyen las 
tad questions. See how to build a tad question. Entonces, si mi oración es positiva, si lo que yo estoy diciendo está positivo, la tad question o el cierto o el verdad que yo voy a constru construir va a ser en negativo. Para eso, chicos, yo voy a necesitar entonces los auxiliares de cada tiempo verbal, ¿sí? Miremos. Y por el contrario, si la oración es negativo, el that question va a ir en positivo. ¿Sí? Entonces, si yo tengo como acá una oración positiva, your cat is so gorgeous, let's see, your cat, that is the subject, refer to be in positive and a complement. The that question goes in negative, isn't he? ¿Sí? Entonces, si yo tengo una oración en positivo, la that question o la o pregunta que yo voy a utilizar para confirmar información va a ser en negativo. Pero si por el contrario la oración está en negativo, el that question va a ser positivo. You don't drink coffee. Do you? Yes. So I have a subject. I have an auxiliary verb. I have a verb and I have a complement. And to build a question, I need this auxiliary, ¿sí? Entonces, si mi oración está como esta, si mi oración está como esta, en negativo, la oración para, la pregunta que yo voy a usar para confirmar la información o para preguntar una opinión va a ser en positivo, ¿sí? ¿Hasta aquí van conmigo? ¿O tenemos alguna pregunta, alguna duda? No. Ok. okay. So, vamos a mirar entonces estos ejemplos que tenemos acá. You know how to cook. Don't you? You don't know how to cook. Do you? En este caso, here, in this first example, we are using or we are having a sentence with present simple. Yes, so that is why I have a subject, I have a verb, and I have a complement. I don't, I don't use any other auxiliary verb or I am not using any other auxiliary But, pero para construir la oración, la that question, yo voy, a unis, yo voy a necesitar entonces el verbo o el auxiliary verb, do, ¿sí? Si por el contrario, yo dijera, she knows how to cook. Aquí entonces, ¿qué verbo auxiliar debería colocar? Doesn't. Doesn't, doesn't she? Good. Doesn't she? Very good. So sería, doesn't she? Yes. Yeah. So she knows how to cook. Doesn't she? ¿Sí? Entonces, siempre que tengamos el presente simple de una oración afirmativa, el that question va a requerir entonces del verbo auxiliar. ¿Sí? Del auxiliar y verb. Y lo vamos a colocar entonces en negativo. Pero si ya está en negativo, miren acá. You don't know how to cook. Do you? ¿Sí? Entonces, retomando. Oraciones positivas van con that question negativa. Negative sentences goes with that questions in negative. Okay, here are other examples using the ing. So he is sleeping, isn't he? You are working this week, aren't you? She was ill last week, wasn't she? They were eating, weren't they? Yes, so if I am using an auxiliary verb, like in this case of the ing, I will use it to build my uh, that question, okay? Vamos a mirar un caso 
eh, o una excepción, que es cuando yo quiero hacer un tag question, cuando yo quiero una, pedir una opinión acerca de una oración que me involucra, ¿sí? Entonces yo digo una oración que me involucra y yo quiero pedir information or an opinion about that. Like, I am the best student in the class. ¿Sí? En este caso, chicos, en el caso de esta oración en el que se involucren o en el que sujeto sea el I, vamos a utilizar el aren't. No vamos a decir am I, no. Aren't I. ¿Sí? So, I am the best student in the class. Aren't I? ¿Sí? Entonces, en ese caso, en ese caso, siempre vamos a utilizar el aren't. Sería en ese único momento en el que yo voy a utilizar el I con el aren't. Eso es una, es una regla gramatical que es, es así. Es una regla gramatical y because of the reason that exists. Sí, es una regla que se utiliza eh, del lenguaje, no es por un invento o un uso que le hayan dado a la gente, no, simplemente es una regla del lenguaje, ¿sí? Hasta aquí tenemos preguntas. Maybe, tal vez es porque sea difícil, esa puede ser una muy buena razón. Muy bien, Ángela, that will be a very good reason, yes. Maybe it's because it's too difficult to say I'm, uh, I'm not I. ¿Sí? Es difícil decir, entonces colocar este con el am negándolo es más fácil decir el aren't. ¿Sí? De pronto es por esa razón, es una muy buena razón. Great, congratulations, Angela. Muy bien, chicos, entonces en ese caso... Vamos. Sí, sir. ¿En qué caso yo puedo hacer preguntas con tal question? En cualquier caso, en cualquiera. Eh, recuerda que yo al principio, cuando yo inicié, les dije que utilizábamos that question en nuestros daily basis, ¿sí? En nuestra vida cotidiana. Entonces, en cualquier el momento que tú quieras pedirle la opinión a alguien más o que tú necesites que te confirmen algo que tú de pronto tienes duda de que sí sea verdad, puedes utilizar un chat question o cuando quieres reconfirmar una una, 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 una información. ¿Sí? Yo he escuchado algunas veces que, o sea, las personas dicen como que are you in your part right? O sea, en vez de estar el tag question, está el right. ¿Es el right se puede reemplazar por un tag question o es otra cosa aparte? The right even could be a that question. Ah, ok. Por eso, yo puedo quitar el right y reemplazarlo por are you, ¿cierto? Yes. Ok. And teacher, I have a question. Yes, Adrián, tell me. Uh, so the question tags are only used when you want to, when you want an answer and the answer is yes or no. Is that correct? Yes. That is correct because it's to confirm information. You are not asking for information. It's only to confirm. So the answer will be yes or no. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Okay. So, guys, uh, the Adrian's question is very accurate. Why? Because with that question, we don't use double H questions. Yes, because we are confirming information. We are not asking or we don't need in new information, okay? Cuando yo utilizo un tag question o un question tag, yo no pregunto o yo no necesito, no estoy solicitando información nueva. ¿Cómo lo hago con las double H, con las preguntas de doble watch? Yo la estoy es confirmando. Es decir, que la respuesta que me pueden dar es yes or no. ¿Sí? ¿Hasta ahí van, van conmigo? ¿Hasta ahí van bien? Okay. Yes. Bueno, let's move 
to the practice. Let's move to the practice. And uh, maybe we find out more uh, new questions. Sí, vamos a mirar entonces esta práctica de acá y vamos a mirar si nos surgen nuevas eh, preguntas. Okay? So, what do we need to do? Here we have some questions or some sentences and we need to identify which is the most accurate that question. Sí, vamos a mirar entonces cuál es el that question que mejor debe ir o cuál es el que debe ir. Listo. So, Sara plays the piano. Doesn't she? Doesn't she? Isn't she? Doesn't she? Doesn't she? Doesn't she? Very good. So, Sara plays the piano. Doesn't she? Yes. Very good. We can use this box. How do we would be? ¿Cómo sería entonces esta? And we. We. We can use this box. Can. We? Very good. So the modal verb goes with with the negative form. Can we? You didn't do your homework. Do you? Didn't you? Did you? Did you? Yeah. Did you? Very good. Mm -hmm. You were on the bus this morning. Were you? Wasn't you? Didn't you? Were you? Were you? Mm -hmm. Were you? Yes, that is correct. Let's see. He never liked eating at restaurants. What is the correct option? Did he? he didn't he? Didn't he? Didn't he? Yes. Why? Because you have a positive sentence. Pero dice que nunca le gustó comer. He never liked. Pero la oración, la oración está en eh, afirmativo. He never liked eating. Didn't he? No, esa parte no la entendí. O sea, el never no cambia el sentido porque, o sea, el no. never está negando. The, the never, yes, the never go, eh, has a, a negative, a negative eh, connotation. But here, pero en este caso estás en una oración afirmativa. Estás afirmando que al no le gustaba. So you need the didn't he. Mm, okay. Okay. He isn't from Mexico. Is he? Yes. Very good. Is he? Yes, correct. And finally, and finally, I am in this group. Are and night. Great. So very good, guys. You did a great, great job. Very good. Muy bien. ¿No surge otra duda o alguna otra pregunta? Um, yes, teacher. I have another question, actually. Yes, tell me. Um, does the intonation of the 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 question means something when you're trying to say it? The intonation is like when you are asking a, a yes no question, but is stronger in the third question. See, ¿sí? la intonación no cambia cuando vas a hacer una pregunta de yes no question. Haces la intonación al principio de la oración, pero yo haces el, la intonación. Eh, al final, ¿sí? Entonces, Sara plays the piano, doesn't she? Es como si hicieras una pregunta de sí o no. Haces la misma entonación que cuando haces una entonación eh, de una pregunta, yes, no question, ¿sí? 
Oh, yes, yeah, because uh, I've seen some people uh, when they speak the question, when they say the question, they use the intonation rising. I mean, Sarah plays the piano, doesn't he? Doesn't she? And when I said to them why they say the rising, why they use the, ri the rising intonation, they told me that because they're not sure if it's, uh, it's true, the statement. So in this case, uh, they told me that the the attack question was really was a really question a real question yes yes of information yes yes is what i said before I you are know. using the that question to confirm information so you are using the same intonation of a real uh, yes no question yes utilizas la entonación como si estuvieras haciendo una pregunta de sí o no real sí no la haces ni más pausada ni más bajita, no. Haces Sara plays the piano. Doesn't he? Yes, es literal. I am emphasized in the third question. En este caso, yo hago énfasis en la pronunciación, lo hago énfasis en el third question. Ok. Ok. Thank you, teacher. Ok, you're welcome. Thank you for asking. Ok. So. I will now share with you um, the reading exercise. We are going to move to the reading exercise. Then we will continue with the speaking part. And we are going to back to the that, that question exercises. Okay? So let's, let's see. Can you see the screen? Can you see this reading? Yes? Okay. So what are we going to do here, guys? We are going to do a true-false reading. Yes, vamos a hacer entonces un ejercicio de verdadero y falso. Un ejercicio de lectura verdadero o falso. So, we need to read these questions. We need to read these tests, excuse me, we need to read these tests and according with the information gathered here, we are going to answer true or false, ¿sí? Pero lo primero es que vamos a hacer entonces un, vamos a aplicar eh, tips de lectura para este tipo de ejercicios de lectura. Cuando nosotros tenemos ejercicios de lectura, guys, like true, false, Um, exercises we need to first the first thing that we need to do even before reading the test is to read the questions you may ask why why to read the questions because with the questions we could identify first what are they asking me about yes what I need to identify in the test Then I could identify the topic, what will be the reading about. And third, I can identify as well the type of vocabulary that I will face during the reading. And if I don't understand maybe some of the vocabulary placed in here in the uh, questions, probably I will not Uh, understand the vocabulary place in the reading. ¿sí? Entonces, ¿por qué leer las preguntas primero cuando estamos haciendo un ejercicio o un examen de lectura es tan importante? Porque primero me van a, yo voy a saber ya qué es lo que me están preguntando. ¿sí? Segundo, porque así voy a saber cuál es el tema central específico de la lectura. Y muchas veces leemos algo, leemos un ejercicio y no sabemos ni siquiera de qué trata. Con las preguntas nos podemos, podemos guiarnos a entender cuál es ese tema central. Y tercero, porque así yo voy a saber cuál es el vocabulario principal de la lectura. ¿sí? Si yo no entiendo alguna palabra que haya acá, que aparezca acá en las preguntas, es posible que cuando me enfrente a la lectura tampoco lo entienda porque pueden ser sinónimos o pueden ser incluso la misma palabra. ¿Yes? So, 
I will ask to some of you to please read the questions. And then we are going to move to the reading. ¿sí? Entonces les voy a pedir a alguien que por favor me lea las preguntas. Miramos de qué se tratan y luego ya sí leemos entonces um, la lectura. Who wants to help me? I want to. Adrián, ok. So, Adrián, you will help me with the questions. You will help me with number one to number five questions. And then Francisco, Francisco Jimenez will help me from questions from six to ten. Ok. 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 Ok, Adrián, so please start with the questions. All right. France is in Central Europe. Is in it? Mm -hmm. Oh, so I can continue? Yes, please read. Por favor, lee eh, las preguntas de la 1 a la 5, ¿ok? Así como están aquí. Ah, uh, no, no, I don't uh, formulate question tags only read the sentences yes right? only read these only read these sentences yes all right, all right. So, uh, the article says france is larger than 19 other european countries the capital city of france is larger than toulouse more than 800,000 people live in marseille the weather is usually not very cold in france Thank you so much, Adrián. So, what do I need to understand here? ¿Qué debo entender acá? Debo primero identificar si Francia se encuentra en Europa Central, ¿cierto? En el número dos, que me están preguntando? ¿Qué debo identificar yo? In number two, what do I need to identify? En español, ¿qué debo identificar yo? Si es más grande que otras 19 okay. ciudades en Europa. Yes. So, I need to find the large of France. Debo identificar entonces qué tan grande es Francia para poderla comparar con otras 19 ciudades. O si específicamente el texto dice que es más grande que otras 19 ciudades. ¿Ok? Acá... Mmm, me están comparando entonces the capital city of France with Toulouse. Yes? So I need to see which is bigger. If Toulouse is bigger than the capital city or vice versa. If the capital city is bigger than Toulouse. Yes? More than 8,000 people live in Marseille. So I need to find the number of people in Marseille. I need to find out the number of people and the weather is usually not very cold so i will uh, scan the weather si ¿Sí? entonces voy a buscar que como es el, el clima en este en este país okay so francisco could you please read from six to ten okay six new zealand and great britain have similar climates France is richer than Germany. France has 500 of the biggest companies in the world. The article says many people like to visit France. The article says six, seven million tourists from the USA visited France in 2012. Very good, Francisco. Remember that 67 million of tourists Stories and visited. No, visit. Okay, it sounds like a double T at the end. Visit. Okay. 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 Very good. So I will need that the someone please help me reading the test. Who wants to help me reading the test? ¿Quién quiere ayudarme entonces a leer acá el texto? I want. Okay, go ahead. Tell me. Okay, France. Uh, officially known as the French Republic, most people know the country of France is located in Western Europe. 
population. France has a population of 50, 60 million people. Only 19 other other countries in the world have a larger population. Cities. Paris okay. population two million two thousand and ¿Cómo se le dice ese número? Two thousand and forty three. Uh, two million Two million two hundred forty three thousand eight thousand thirty three hundred. Okay, two million two hundred forty three thousand eight hundred and thirty. Al revés, two thousand and forty three hundred. Two million two hundred forty three hundred. Ah, okay, two million two thousand and forty three hundred and eight hundred and thirty three. Uh huh. Is the capital city of France. Uh, other large well known cities include Marcel, a POP 850, 726, Lyon POP 484, 344, and Toulouse POP 400, uh, 441, 800, 802. Climate, most of France has an oceanic climate, which means that it has a cool summers and cool, cool not cold winters. Other places with this kind of climate include New Zealand, the Pacific Northwest of the United States, the West Coast of Canada, and Great Britain. Economy. Thank you so much, Erika. Thank you so much. Okay. Vamos a darle entonces la oportunidad a Esteban. Remember how you pronounce the numbers. Remember how you pronounce the numbers. In this case, it's 8,500, 726. 8,800, 344. 3,400, a hundred and two okay but very good you have a good pronunciation very good esteban do you want to help me uh, yes with economy and tourism yes economy france is a rich country it has world's night in nine largest economy and the second largest economy in the Euro in the European Union after Germany. It has 21 of the 500 biggest companies in the world. Tourists. France is a popular place for tourists. Uh, 83 million foreign tourists visit, visit France in two, 2012 which was more than USA with 67 million foreign to tourists. Very good, great, muy bien. So this article describes us, describe us France, yes? So it tells us how big is France, it tells us about the population, the cities, how big or how small are the cities, and uh, about the climate, the economy, if the country is rich or not, and about the tourism, yes? So how the tourism work, it works in France. Yes, so basically that is the main idea of the topic. Let's see, Fran France is in Central Europe, true or false? False. False. For because France Republic Western Europe. Entonces, la respuesta correcta para eso está en donde? In as Francisco say. In Western Europe. Yeah, it's very located good. in Western well, Europe. Is false. Very good. Is false. Totally. The article says France. France is larger is larger than 19 other European countries. Is that true? Uh, it's true. Yes, no. 
Vamos entonces, chicos, a yeah. decir si es false or true and when we can find the answer, ¿sí? Vamos a mirar entonces dónde puedo encontrar yo esa pregunta. Es que ahí dice de la población, pero abajo en la pregunta no dice nada de la población. Simplemente dice que es más grande. Ok, so the article says France is large is larger than 19 other European countries, but no. let's take what does it say here. Only 19 other countries in the mm. world have a larger population. Entonces, okay. no es que sea más grande que otros 19 países, no, sino que otros 19 países son más grandes que Francia. So, the answer is both. Yes. The capital city of France is larger than Toulouse. That is true or false? True. Yes, it's true. true. Very, it's true, yes. Very good. More than 8,000 people live in Marseille. False. Yeah, true. More yeah. than. <laughs> true. Yes, that is true. Yes, very good. Very good. The weather is usually not very cold in France. True. Yes, that it has cool summers and cool, not cold winters. Yes, that is true. Mm -hmm. New Zealand and Great Britain have similar climates. Yes. True. Yes. True. Yes. Very good. Other places with this kind of climate include New Zealand and Great Britain. Yes. Very good. France is richer than Germany. It's false. True. Um, it's true? Yes or no? No. no it's false. Is the second large. Yes, that is the answer. Esa es la respuesta. Is the second. Yes, very good. France has 1,500 of the biggest companies in the world. True. It's true. It's true? Yes. False. It's no, it's only, only has, has, it only it's has 31, not 500. Uh-huh, yes. Yes, very good. Let's take a look. It has... Three, uh, 31 of the big, of the 500 biggest companies in the world. Very good. That is false. The article says many people like to visit France. True. Mm -hmm. It's true. Yes, it's true. And the article says 16.7 million tourists from the USA visit France in 2012. True. False. True. I know she it's has true. 18. 83 million. It's true or false? It's true. Because it True. says which was more than the USA with 67 million foreign tourists. But let's take a look to the, to the sentence here. Mira lo que dice la oración. The article says that, seven, that 67 million tourists. Oh, it's the, false, it's false, it's false. Yeah, it's false. And that is completely False, yes. Very good. So let's check our answers. So we say France, false, yes. The number one is false. We say that the second was false, yes. 
Number three, true, as well as four and five. Yes, and as well as six and seven. As well as six. Ay, ustedes me dijeron que este era falso, ¿cierto que sí? Yo fui la que lo puse mal. Sí, profe, tú lo marcaste mal. Sí, yo sí me acuerdo, yo, pero si esto está... Dice, perdón, you were right, yes. Eh, yes, number seven is false. Number eight is false as well. Number nine, true. And number ten, false. Great, guys. Ustedes tienen muy buen eh, reading skills. You have a really good reading skills. It's good to apply these type of uh, tips because um, it's easier at the moment of reading a test. It's easier to scam the test. Sí, es bueno aplicar este tipo de tips al principio. Primero leer las preguntas, entender qué es lo que me están preguntando, incluso entenderlo en el idioma eh, in our first language. Yes? It is not bad to try to understand it in Spanish. Because I will know what do I need to focus on. ¿sí? No está mal entenderlo primero en español. Eh, porque si yo voy a saber en qué es lo que me debo enfocar, qué información es la que yo debo buscar eh, específicamente. Good. Ok, so now we are going to do the speaking exercise. Yes. Um, I will give you. Um, we are going to try to do an exercise. It is not related with tag questions with our topic today, but is very very uh, related. Is closely related with questions. Yes. I will give you one statement. I will give you one sentence. And you should give me, and you should answer me with the correct question, ¿sí? Entonces, ¿qué vamos a hacer para este ejercicio de lectura? De, de, de speaking, perdón. Vamos a hacer un ejercicio en el que yo les doy una oración, ¿sí? Les doy una respuesta y ustedes deben contestarme a mí con la pregunta correcta para ese eh, type of sentence that I give you, okay? So, for example, um, no, I was not riding in the park. The correct question for that will be, was you riding in the park? And the answer, no, I was not riding in the park. You know what do we need to do? Yes, it's clear. It's clear what do we need to do? Si está claro lo que debemos hacer. Yes? Ok. Entonces, vamos a hacerlo de la siguiente manera. Las dos primeras oraciones las vamos a hacer entre todos. Y luego ya voy a pedir por un voluntario. Listo? So, I will give you the sentence. I am, I am studying French. I am studying French. ¿Cómo sería la pregunta para esa respuesta? I am studying French. What are you studying? Yes, very good. What are you studying? I am studying French. Um, no, no, I don't like, no, I don't like a pineapple pie. No, I don't like pineapple pie. Do you like pineapple pie? Yes, very good, Adrian. Great. So, who wants to help me? Maybe Jessica, you want to help me? Uh, do you like uh, pineapple pie? Mm -hmm. Okay, Jessica. So, I will give you an answer and you okay. will give me the question. Okay? Uh, no. Uh, I am not, I, I don't like pineapple pie. Do you like pineapple pie? Bueno, te voy a dar entonces ahora yo a ti una eh, respuesta diferente y tú me vas a dar la pregunta a eso. ¿Listo? Okay. Um, I have been teaching for 
three years now. I have been teaching for three years now. Um, have you been this teacher? I know how long have you been teaching? Great, very good, Jessica. That was a great answer. How long have you been teaching? I have been teaching for three years now. Great, very good. Who else? Who wants to help me? Erika? Yes. Okay, so we are going to work with Erika and then with Angie, okay? So, Erika. Yes. Um, I traveled to London last summer. I traveled to London last summer. When did you travel to London? Uh, repeat again. When did you travel to London? Great, good, very good. Exists another possibility to, for that answer. Existe otra posibilidad para ese tipo de respuesta. I traveled to London last summer. Uh, Where are you going to? Okay. No. Where did you travel uh, last summer? Yes, very good. Great, Erika. So I can ask for where did you travel or for when do you travel the last summer? Great, Erika. You did a great job. And okay. finally, let's work with Angie. Angie, are you there? Yes, teacher. Yes, Angie. So let's see this answer. I was working. I was working in a pizza factory. Uh, where were you working? Very good. And this other answer. Let's check this other answer. No, I wasn't talking in English. Uh, were you talking in English? Yes, very good. That is correct. We begin. Okay, guys. So, we are going to do our listening exercise. This listening exercise will be a very small dictation. We are going to do a very, very small dictation. I will um, say to you five chat questions of, uh, and you will write it down. ¿Sí? Les voy a dictar entonces cinco oraciones con chat questions y ustedes las deben escribir. I will repeat the five questions twice. Only at the end, we are going to share the answers, ¿ok? Only at the end. ¿Sí? Solo al final les voy a pedir que through the chat, share our answers, ¿sí? Solo a través del chat, al final vamos entonces a compartir las respuestas. Listo, entonces les voy a dictar cinco oraciones que contienen that questions, ¿ok? ¿Entendido? Yes. 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 Okay. yes. So, number one, you are from Madrid, aren't you? Number one, you are from Madrid, aren't you? Number two, he doesn't speak French. Does he? Number two, he doesn't speak French. Does he? Number three, he shoots. Uh, number three, he was the best in the class, wasn't he? He was the best in the class, wasn't he? Number four, your sister is in Buenos Aires, isn't she? Number four, your sister is 
in Buenos Aires, isn't she? And number five, they didn't go to the class last week, did they? And finally, number five, they didn't go to the class last week, did they? Voy a repetir otra vez las cinco de nuevo. You are from Madrid, aren't you? He doesn't speak French, does he? He was the best in the class, wasn't he? Your sister is in Buenos Aires, isn't she? They didn't go to the class last week, did they? Okay, so guys, now please share your answers through the chat. Vamos entonces ahora a compartir nuestras respuestas a través del chat, a través del chat, y las vamos a chequear entre todos, ¿ok? Ok, so, Ángela. Ángela, you are from Madrid, aren't you? He doesn't speak French, does he? He was the best in the class, wasn't he? Your sister is in Buenos Aires, isn't she? They didn't go to the class. Great, Angela. Very good. Very good. Jessica, great as well. Muy bien. Daniela, very good. Francisco, you are from... Very good, Francisco as well. Mm -hmm. Angie, you are from Madrid. He was the best in the class, wasn't he? Your sister is, isn't she? They didn't go to the class last week. Very good. Angie, solo que recuerda que en la segunda de pronto al typear se te, te faltó el question mark, pero super bien. Very good. As well as Jessica. As well as Jessica, very good. You did great sentences. Mm -hmm. He doesn't speak French, does he? Yes. They didn't go to the class last week, did they? Very good. Francisco, great as well. Francisco, very good. Mm -hmm. Very good, guys. Okay, muy bien. Voy entonces a revisar.